Welcome to Dresden, Ontario. I'm Steve Cook and I grew up in this small town. It's a rural farming community with a population of about 2,700 people. Of that population, there are roughly 10 to 12 black families. That's today. But back in the 1840s and 1850s, over 500 blacks were drawn here because they heard something exciting was happening. A school for refugees from slavery had been built in 1841. It was called the British American Institute, and around it developed a community known as the Dawn Settlement. The man behind the vision for the school was a refugee from slavery himself. His name was Josiah Henson, and it's his story and the story of these other refugees from slavery that we tell here at Uncle Tom's Cabin Historic Site. The museum is owned and operated by the Ontario Heritage Trust. We preserve, promote, and share Ontario's rich heritage. And it's Josiah Henson's story I'd like to share with you today. So we're now in the Josiah Henson Interpretive Centre. This room is called the North Star Theatre. And it's in this space where we talk about the African diaspora and trace the personalities and events from 3000 BC to the present day. Josiah Henson was born into slavery in Maryland in 1789. He was soon thereafter put on the auction block and all of his brothers and sisters were sold away from him. But he was able to be reunited with his mother and uh, she raised him on the plantation where he eventually rose to the position of superintendent of the farm. And in that position you were paid a little bit of money so he arranged with his owner to be able to purchase his freedom. But his owner took advantage of the fact that Josiah didn't know how to read or write. So he tricked Josiah out of his money, and that's when Josiah realized that his owner was never going to be a man of his word and give him his freedom. So he decided to steal his freedom. With his wife Charlotte and their four kids, they ran away on the Underground Railroad. It was a six-week journey, traveling at night, hiding during the day. They were helped by First Nations people along the way before they finally arrived up in Buffalo, New York. And it was there that they crossed over to the Canadian side and landed in Fort Erie, Ontario. And Henson stayed there for a few years, then went down to uh, the Windsor area, where he met up with a man by the name of Hiram Wilson, who was a graduate of Oberlin University in Ohio. Hiram Wilson had already started up a few schools here in Canada, and Josiah and he worked together and decided that Dresden would be an ideal location to start up the next school. So it was here they settled in 1841 and started the British American Institute. Henson traveled extensively. He went to England three times, showed off uh, products from the site here in England at the Great Exhibition in 1851. And that was where he first saw Queen Victoria and little did he know that later in his years, on his third visit over to England, he would be a guest of hers at Windsor Castle. She had read Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and wanted to meet the man behind the inspiration for the character of Tom. He lived out the rest of his life here in the house that we have on the property, and is buried in the Henson Family Cemetery, where your tour will end. So here we have a first edition of Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. She published it in 1852. It sold over 300,000 copies the first year in the United States and over a million in Great Britain. Everyone was reading this story and then they began to question the characters that she created. Could this story really have happened was their question and she took offense to that. So she wrote a second book, which you see in the case here. It's called A Key to Uncle Tom's Cabin. And it was in that book that Harriet Beecher Stowe referenced Josiah Henson's autobiography, which he published in 1849. She said it was a source for her in developing the character of Uncle Tom in her novel. And that's how he became known as the real Uncle Tom. The Underground Railroad Freedom Gallery is where we have a collection of books and artifacts pertinent to slavery and the abolition movement, and interwoven within the collection is Josiah Henson's story. 
Knowing that a lot of our visitors don't have a history of slavery, we talk them through the beginnings, how it started in Africa with the slave trade, beginning with the Portuguese in the 15th century, and they were soon followed by the Dutch, the French, the Spanish, and the British. They arrived on the west coast of Africa and stole between 12 and 15 million Africans, loading them on boats, as you see here, for what was called the transatlantic slave trade. This is the uplifting section of the gallery called the Underground Railroad. It's here we talk about the 20 to 30,000 runaways who made it to Canada on the Underground Railroad. They traveled between 1830 and 1860 primarily and traveled by foot, by wagon. One man made it all the way from Richmond, Virginia to Philadelphia by mailing himself in a box. And you'll hear his inspiring story when you come to tour the museum. The British American Institute lands were 200 acres of land that Josiah and Hiram Wilson purchased for $4 an acre. On this land were built a rope factory, a brickyard, a sawmill, a blacksmith shop, all these small industries that would teach these refugees from slavery new skills to survive in this new Canadian environment. Josiah Henson didn't do this on his own. He had the support of his wives, of course. His first wife, Charlotte, died the same year Uncle Tom's Cabin was published, 1852. And for six years, he courted this black widow from Boston. Her name was Nancy Gambrill and uh, they didn't have any children together, but with his first wife, Charlotte, they had 10 children. For 10 years, an assortment of abolitionists and missionaries, both black and white, kept the Institute going. An executive committee oversaw its operation, and Henson and Hiram Wilson went on frequent fundraising tours. The sawmill was an integral part of the operations here at the Dawn Institute. This land was covered with a thick growth of black walnut trees. They would be cut into planks in the sawmill, taken to the Sydenham River, which cut through the British American Institute lands, and then they would sell them down the river in ports such as Detroit and Boston, and that money would be brought back to be reinvested into the lands here. Behind me, in this house, lived Josiah Henson and his second wife, Nancy Gambrill. The house was built in 1852 and stands today as a Canadian landmark. It's a two-story structure, two bedrooms upstairs, and on the main level is the kitchen and the den. Spirituality and community were very important in these early black churches. It was from the sermons and the songs that they sang that they received the inspiration to, as our ministers say, keep on keeping on. This particular church was one that Josiah Henson preached in when he lived down near Windsor in the Colchester area, and it was moved up here in 1964. Your tour will end here at the Henson Family Cemetery. Here you'll find the stones of Henson descendants, as well as the federal plaque designating Josiah Henson a figure of national historic significance. This was erected in 1999. It sits beside his tombstone. Josiah Henson died May 5th, 1883, almost 93 years of age. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Uncle Tom's Cabin historic site. I couldn't possibly tell you all of the fascinating history we want to share with you in such a short video. So you have an open invitation to come and visit us. Please visit www.uncletomscabin.org. There you'll find our hours of operation and some special content we're developing in the weeks and months ahead. We hope to see you soon.